that Susanna Soberg study, um, they were that was involving sauna and cold, right? They were they were combining the both, and they and the the outcome of it was they recommended like at eleven minutes per week or something like this. Yeah, um, and um, it, it was an it was able to boost metabolism. There's a lot of um, oversimplification. What she did for her dissertation, and she's published in Cell and uh -huh. other journals. It's very good. Um, but it's also damn hard to make a living as a PhD faculty member in the European Union. The jobs are just not plentiful. Typically, you have to do a long postdoc, wait for somebody to die, then a faculty job will open yeah. up. And the funding sources aren't quite as good as they are in the United States. The university system isn't growing. Uh, it's a bleak career to slog it out as a faculty member in the EU. So what she has done, as far as I can tell, uh, is make a career for herself as what she calls a thermalist. So advising people on how to use thermal contrast therapy to improve the quality of their lives. Okay. And she probably has a lot of case studies. I don't know for a fact. She blocked me years ago on Twitter because of what? something about, I'm not kidding you, Danny. Um, you can look this up. Something, some disagreement that we had about cortisol. She goes, I measure cortisol. And then she blocked me. So I'm not counting on her to read the book or anything, but I see that her work in Cell is quite good, but it's also been oversimplified and exaggerated because that's what you need to do if you're going to make a living through social media or right. coaching people. Right. I don't think that there's you really have a choice in the matter. You, yeah. And I'm not calling it dumb it down. I mean, simplify it and exaggerate it. So let's talk about that study in cell. Her dissertation is essentially in using PET scanning to identify brown fat. Okay. You go back 15, 20 years, medical doctors were convinced there was no such thing as brown fat in the adult human body. Infants have it, but they thought the human beings all grow out of it. And I said earlier, you know, 95% of the people tested don't have it. But the Swedes discovered brown fat in people who were continuously exposed to cold. These were typically cancer patients that would come in to have their tumor scanned and they say, hey, what's else is showing up on the scan? It was brown fat. Now you can do- a Why whole cancer patients? Because the way PET scanning works, you inject a, a radioactive form of glucose. This travels through the body. Now, cancer cells will preferentially metabolize glucose. So this radioactive tracer gets sucked up into the tumor cells. They will then, bypassing the mitochondria, use that glucose to produce ATP and proliferate. So if they want to image your tumor, they give you this radioactive tracer glucose and shows up on the positron emission tomography scan. Because the tumors suck it up. You got it, right. So that's you a concentration of radioactive tumors thrive tracer. on glucose. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. These instruments are very large. Uh, they can run hot. Sometimes you have to keep the instrument room cool mm -hmm. just for the instrument. And in some cases, it's cold enough for the patient, you know, who's wearing one of those stupid gowns to get active brown fat going. And so in a few scans, these Swedish researchers saw symmetrical depots that would show up. And they said, that must be brown fat. Nobody believed them until someone at the Sloan Kettering Institute in New York said, I'll show those guys. I've got 10,000 PET scans. They're gonna look at them at all. Yeah. 95% of them, no detectable brown fat, but 5% of them showed exactly those symmetrical depots and those Swedish researchers were proven right. There is brown fat in adult human beings who practice regular cold exposure. So by the time Susanna, and, and I don't know her, I haven't talked to her, but by the time that she's in her graduate program, you can do a whole PhD on this thing. There's been an explosion of brown fat research because it's such a fascinating topic and so critical for human health. She's doing PET scans and she says, I'm going to get these Danish winter swimmers. So these are people who like jump in the fjord and they swim around for fun in Denmark. And she scans them. And she says, lo and behold, they have active brown fat. Mm. I've shown it in, and this is wonderful. She does a survey and she says, okay, um, how often do you go? How long do you stay in there? Do you also sauna and blah, blah, blah. And there's a whole variety of responses, as you might imagine. So she averages them out. And she says, of the Danish winter swimmers surveyed, they do an average of 11 minutes a week. 
Now, if you're going to mm. oversimplify and exaggerate this, then you'll go on the Huberman podcast and you'll say, well, 11 minutes a week, that's all you need. That's the, the dose that you should have. But we don't know that. It could be that there's a minimum effective dose that is less sure. than a, nobody's ever really done sure. like, the comprehensive study. What we do know is that these people did on average 11 minutes and they all mm. had brown fat. Maybe you could do five. Mm -hmm. but, you know, a PET and, scan is not something you want to sign up for. And where did Huberman get this? And you might have already told, I don't remember if you told me this on the podcast or before we started, but where did Huberman get this idea of ending on cold? That's a metabolic recommendation. Okay. When, when you're somebody studying brown fat, you're all about the metabolism. You're saying, what would cause the brown fat to you know, suck up glucose or triglycerides or fatty acids from the bloodstream? How would it be active? What kind of calories are burned in the brown fat? What's the effect of brown fat on the metabolism? If what you're doing is going to the cold plunge because you want to maximize the function of your brown fat, Finish on cold and have your body rewarm itself yeah. using its own thermogenic mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So from the perspective of a brown fat scientist, finishing on cold makes all kinds of sense. You're going to get the most brown fat activity. If you go straight into the sauna after you do the cold, then it's kind of like you're giving your brown fat a break. There could be great reasons for it. The ice bath is vasoconstriction. So this is smooth muscle tissue closing off the blood vessels that supply blood to your extremities. This is to protect your core body temperature against the cold. Your limbs will get cold, yeah. but your core stays your, warm. Your organs, your deep, your internal organs suck up all the blood to stay alive. You got it. It'll go into your head because usually your head is not you know, submerged in the ice bath. This is good for perfusion in the brain. Vasoconstriction is like a workout for your smooth muscle tissue. Mm -hmm. Then you might say, and then I want to go into the sauna. I want to get that vasodilation yeah. when I'm sweating. And this will be good for my vasculature, which it is. The end on cold when you're doing thermal contrast therapy is a metabolic recommendation. Maybe metabolism isn't what you're in there for. Maybe you're getting in there for psychological reasons. Maybe you're using the cold not so much to recruit brown fat. You're not worried about losing weight. Maybe you're doing it for other reasons. And in that case, there's no reason to end on cold. What you and I did this morning was kind of flip your usual routine. We did cold, we did exercise, we did sauna, and then we just did like a little micro dose yes. of cold for the energy boost, right? I do it for only the energy boost. That's the only reason I do it oh, for. That's cool. Um, and it seems like it's working. So would that, would that hinder the energy boost if you go in the sauna after? You tell me. Uh, give it a shot and see whether you feel that that dopamine rush that you get is wearing off. Well, I feel great right now. I feel pretty Today, Today's my too. first day trying it yeah. with, with the sauna at the end. The reason you do it at the end is because there's really good research on using sauna for recovery from strenuous exercise. So mm. if you do a hard workout, you know, Huberman has told us this and he's right. Do not do an ice bath after a hard workout. Right. You will blunt the information. You will reduce the hypertrophy. Yeah. If you're going for muscle growth, right. then wait at it least four hours, he no. says, right? Well, and that's fine. If you do the cold before your workout, you will speed your recovery, boost your testosterone without um, delaying or blunting that hypertrophy. Yeah. And this is a remarkable finding that is partly coming out of Craig Heller and is substantiated by other sources. Do your cold first, then do your exercise, yeah. and you'll get a testosterone. And boost. you can lift way more, and you have way more endurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>